What's up guys? Today I want to show you a nice little technique I use in Premiere Pro to get my audio to match my slow motion clips when I want it to stay attached. Because believe it or not, when you speed ramp in Premiere Pro, your audio doesn't ramp with the actual video and it's pretty frustrating. However, I know you can use After Effects and it's a great way to do it because the audio stays attached. But this is my pro tip on how to do it in Premiere Pro. So yeah, it's pretty annoying that Premiere doesn't have that feature yet and it's 2020, but maybe it has something to do with like processors and all that fun stuff. Before I jump into today's video, know I give away one free version of my Ultimate Effects Pack, just click the link in the description down below. The winner is also announced in the description from my last video. And drop a comment because I'll be reading them at the end of my videos. I just want to start a conversation, y'all. And this video would not be possible without my friends at Skillshare. Skillshare is kind of like an online learning community where you can learn just about anything to fuel your creativity or curiosity. Right now, I've kind of been in a little rut and I haven't been feeling too productive, so I checked out this video from Greg McCone, which is talking all about productivity and how to change your life to become more productive. I think the best thing about Skillshare is it's less than $10 a month. The first 500 to click the link in the description down below will actually get two free months free. That's pretty cool. Skillshare, Skillshare, Skillshare. The biggest thing is to never stop learning. With Skillshare, I'm able to look at anything and everything that I want. So, thanks again, Skillshare. Let's get on with this video. All right, so this is the clip that we have right here, and it's just a video of me diving off the diving board. So typically when you would want to speed ramp something, you would right click on this FX button, go to time remapping and select speed. And now you have this line that you can drag around. If you drag it up, it'll increase the speed. And if you drag it down, it'll decrease the speed. But notice how the audio doesn't change at all. That's pretty frustrating if you want the audio to match. So this is how you do it. You wanna find a point that you want to start to slow down your clip. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna control click on that line to create a point. I'm also gonna hit C on my keyboard and make a cut on the audio layer. Now I'm gonna scroll forward to where I want to speed the video back up. I'm gonna control click on that line again and then I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard and make a cut on the audio layer as well. Now all I have to do is drag this middle line down to about 40%. Since I shot this at 60 frames per second, I can only go down to 40% and still get smooth slow motion. And I'm gonna drag my first speed ramp keyframe out a little bit, and then I'm gonna drag my second one out a little bit as well, just to smooth that speed ramp out. How do we get the audio to match? Well, we need this middle audio layer to match the duration of the beginning of this speed ramp and the end of this speed ramp. So the quick an easy example is just drag this out and then click R on your keyboard and this brings up the rate stretch tool. So whenever you drag this around, it'll actually change the speed of the clip you have selected. So I'm gonna drag this to the end of that speed ramp right there, and then I'm gonna drag my back audio layer to that point right there. Now all you have to do is right click on your first cut and select apply default transition. And then right click on your second cut and also select apply default transition. If you play this back, watch what happens. So as you just saw, it played it back and it slowed down the audio. Now it's not perfect, but it works pretty dang good. So let's show you one more example and make it a little bit more complex. Nailed it, Kyler. You really nailed that entry. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna actually slow the clip down right here, speed it up right here, and then slow it down for the entry. So the same process is as follows. You're gonna right click on the FX button, go to time remapping, speed, and then set a keyframe where you wanna start the slow motion. I'm gonna hold control and click right there, and then hit C on the keyboard and make a cut in the audio layer. Let's scrub forward to where we want this slow motion to end. Right about there looks good. Hold control, make a keyframe right there, and then hit C and cut the audio layer down there. Now, I like to work as I go, just so I don't get lost in the sauce. Yes, that's my analogy. 
I'm going to drag in between these two speed ramps keyframes and drag it all the way down to 40%. And just like before, I'm going to change this speed ramp to adapt it however I would like. I'm going to do something like that. Now I have to make this middle audio layer the same distance as the beginning and the end of the speed ramp. So let's hit click R on a keyboard to bring up the right stretch tool and drag this to the end of that speed ramp and drag the back half of the audio layer together. Right click on the first portion, apply default transition, and let's drag this down a little bit because I'm starting to get smaller stuff. And then right click on the second one, apply default transition. And let's drag that down as well. So let's keep scrubbing forward a little bit. And this is normal speed again. And then I want to slow it down probably right about there. So I'm going to hit control and make a keyframe right there on the speed ramp and make a cut on my audio layer. And I actually don't need to make another keyframe because I'm just going to slow this entire back half down. Drag the back line down to 40%. And then I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit and I'm going to modify this speed ramp a little bit and then click R on my keyboard to bring up the rate stretch tool. Drag that last audio layer to the end of the video. And again, right click on that cut and go to apply default transition. So now if we play this back, it looks like this. It's not a perfect solution, but for now, it works great. For Premiere Pro, it's a pretty simple fix to a very annoying issue. But in the meantime, if I'm doing something for a real client, I'm just gonna use After Effects, because with After Effects, the audio stays attached to the video, and it works great. For skateboarding videos, that's how you get that slow motion warp effect, or whatever the hell it sounds like, you know, when they like tray flip, but. Let's read some of the questions that I had on my last video. What fundamentals that we can learn before make a good video like these or for a project? Well, the best thing you can do is practice. I know I'm always saying practice, but it starts there. Once you understand the basics of Premiere Pro, and that is understanding all the effects and how it works, then you can start breaking it down into all of the key features of video when it comes to composition, lighting, story. There's so much stuff that gets involved in it that you kind of just have to start with making a single video. Before you know it, you're gonna have so much practice and be able to experiment with those different effects. And the best thing I can recommend to you is watch a bunch of YouTube tutorials and learn something new every single day. Because then, before you know it, you're gonna be amazing. Duncan Smith said, have been filming for a few years now. These tips are really good reminders for keeping your edits sharp. Duncan, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to crank out these tutorials as much as I can. It's just hard when I'm traveling nonstop. Rachel said, what would you say is the best way to develop your own video editing style besides constantly editing to train the memory muscle? Rachel, I think it comes with time. And I say this with knowing from my personal experience. I change a lot over the years and I'm always changing it up. I used to do all these crazy zoom in, slide, spin effects, and now I just kind of like a straight cut. Um, the biggest thing is to just look at what you like. If you like Sam Coulter's videos, make your videos like Sam Coulter. But the one thing I would say is make it your own. Like you wanna be unique. You don't want to be someone else. You wanna be yourself in a unique way. So I'll look at someone's video and be like, dude, that's so dope. How did they do that? I'll learn how they do that and then I'll figure out how I can apply that to my own videos. So try that technique and it might help you out. Documented said, what is the best way to get clients after your portfolio is made? One thing you can do is look on Craigslist. You can look at Facebook Marketplace, or you can look on Facebook because they always have giant jobs going on. You can pretty much look anywhere there is job posting, like even in the newspaper, you never know. But the biggest thing is once you have a portfolio, you can start to reach out to companies. For example, if you want to get into the music scene and you want to film videos for venues, you might want to start by reaching out and saying, hey, can I show up to one of your concerts that's coming up um, and shoot some pictures or shoot a video for you and I'll give you a video completely for free. And the reason why I say that is because then you can get the in, you can film these artists, and then you can send the artist the actual video. And that's kind of what I did a couple years ago when I was filming at Ohio State. There was a DJ going on, I did a little video for him, and I sent it to him. So it's pretty cool because when you do stuff for free, you're actually building a connection, and connections in this line of work is extremely important. Start by offering your services for free, build that connection and respect, and honestly, before you know it, you'll have enough connections to start charging people some moolah.
Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, click that like button. Let me know what you think down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. And as always, I'll see you next time.